G'day guys. Today I'm going to be talking about why I think the Australian green tree frog is the number one pet frog for literally anyone. So first we'll talk about their housing. Their housing is very simple and easy. You can keep them in anything from say a 45 centimeter by 45 centimeter by 45 centimeter size tank or bigger. This is accommodating for a fully grown one. If you were keeping uh, younger ones, obviously you can keep them in something much smaller. But let's say this one here, which is almost fully grown, I'd keep, I'm um, currently keeping him in a terrarium, which is for a 45 centimeter cube, basically. And he's quite happy in that. And you can go bigger if you want, but you can keep them in something as small as that, and they're quite happy. So, I mean, housing requirements, it's very easy, doesn't take up much space. And yeah, they're just all around great for housing especially if you live in an apartment and you don't have much room to work with at all. Second um, reason they're great is just the general cost and maintenance. So these guys are not expensive to keep alive and happy. They're, being a frog, they're insectivorous, so strictly an insect diet. I think he's walking up my arm now. <laughs> um, yeah, strictly an insect diet only. So that means crickets, wood roaches, mealworms, superworms, um, silkworms even and so on whatever's available to you depending where you live I'm in Australia so that's kind of all I can get I know in a lot of the um, other areas of the world like for example the US you can get duvet roaches and waxworms they're fine as well so yeah strictly insectivorous so that's not too much of an expensive thing to get to feed them their only little drawback compared to say a snake or something is they do eat more regular so a snake for example will eat once every week or once every two weeks. These guys will be eating every two to three days usually. So you'd want to feed them maybe three times a week, four times, even if they're a bigger frog. Uh, so yeah, you're going to have to have live feeders on you at almost all times. That's kind of the only annoying thing with keeping frogs just in general. But if you're happy with that, the rest of their care is very minimal and simple. It is important when you're feeding them to mix their diet up. You don't want to just feed them one type of feeder. I'm not sure, I mean, I'm sure they appreciate the variety just you know, so they're not eating the same thing all the time, but it's more because uh, they need a balanced diet of just varied uh, different nutritional value they get from different insects. Some insects are more higher in fat than others, uh, and you don't want to be feeding too much of the one fatty type of insects because they'll end up, they can actually end up overweight. So, for example, you wouldn't feed it wood roaches constantly. Wood roaches are much higher in protein than, say, crickets are. So, if you were to feed it just wood roaches only, it would end up overweight. You'd want to mix it up with some crickets and uh, mealworms and superworms and whatever else is around at the time for you, I guess. And also, do not, and I mean do not, catch insects from your garden to feed to your frog. That is the number one way to introduce parasites into the mix with your frog. And worst case scenario, if there are pesticides outside, it'll end up killing your frog. So it's just safer to stick to, uh, you know, store-bought feeders. So another nice feature this species has in particular over most other frogs is, as you can see, it's not too phased about being handled. It'll just chill out on your hand. As you saw, it walks up your arm sometimes and just kind of walks around, but it doesn't jump or try to get away. So handling, they're great, but I'm handling it for this video. Generally, I almost never pick it up because, yes, it is kind of tame and it tolerates handling very well, and it doesn't really try to jump or run or anything, so I don't have to worry about it. But I mean, honestly, if you're going to get into keeping frogs, you need to have that mindset that you're getting into this animal as a display animal only. I mean, if you want something to handle, get a bearded dragon or a python or something. With the exception of me making this video, I generally never handle this frog because frogs, well, I'm sure it doesn't like being handled, but the main one is unlike reptiles, Amphibians uh, don't have scales, the skin is very soft and it's absorbent and they actually breathe through their skin. So if I'm holding this frog all the time, if I have any chemicals on my hands at any time, so deodorant or uh, moisturizing creams or anything like that, any sort of chemical that I've been touching, soap, um, it'll absorb into the frog's skin because their skin is actually very much like a sponge. So you don't want that because that can potentially kill your frog or cause at least a very nasty skin infection. And even the oils on our skin, with constant handling of them, the oils in our skin can sometimes absorb into their skin 
and dehydrate them because um, on top of them breathing through their skin, frogs need constant moisture. They dry out very easily. If I put a frog in a dry tank, like a tank designed to say a uh, bearded dragon, where it's a pretty much dry environment, the frog will not last very long. It'll dry up, it'll shrivel up and die. They need to be kept moist. So, um, yeah, that's the other reason why you don't want to handle them too often. Now, I've wet my hands before I handle this. So if you do have to handle your frog, I'd recommend actually wetting your hands before you pick your frog up. If your hands are wet, it lowers the risk of anything bad happening when you're holding it, hence like in regards to it drying out and stuff. So you don't want to hold them for too long. So they're very easy to care for. You can go the one way and have an extravagant terrarium with live plants and that looks amazing. And you get a few of these guys also, it's great because they are kind of social, they'll hang out together. Uh, you can have them in large groups or in pairs, whatever you want. So they're not aggressive with each other at all. You can have as many as you want. Or you can have a single one like I've got at the moment. I do plan on getting some more, but for now I've just got this one. Um, and they do really well. Or again, you can have them in just a standard glass tank or a plastic critter keeper tank and a water bowl, you know, a dog bowl. <laughs> yeah, I mean, these aren't the sort of frog that just sits in the water all the time. Being a tree frog, as you know, they mostly, mostly sit up in the trees, uh, so it'll be up on the branches you put in there, just sitting around chilling, and occasionally it'll jump down into the water for like a couple of seconds, just to rehydrate its skin, and it'll jump back out. So they're not, they don't need much water, as a little bowl of water, so they can go down and rehydrate, and they're fine. So in regards to temperature, when I was saying about, you don't, just as I said, <laughs> jump it, just jumped on top of the camera, I'll be back, I gotta get up, one second. A few moments later. All right, we're back. <laughs> I am not kidding you guys. That is the first time I've ever seen this frog jump, literally ever. So that was crazy. Um, I guess she likes my ring light. Anyway, uh, what was I talking? If I forget what I was talking about. Um, what was I talking about? I've forgotten. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Um, ah, so heating, yes. So with heating these guys, they're very forgiving with temperature. They're not as specific as a lot of other species of frogs, um, which is why I'm, uh, the main reason I'm recommending them. They're very forgiving. They can tolerate, or well, they're quite happy, I should say, in anywhere from, say, 22 degrees up to 26 degrees which that's a bit of a spectrum to work with. So yeah, I mean, at the moment I'm in Australia and we're kind of just hit our summer. It's not crazy hot yet though. I mean, our summer's been pretty cool this year. So I don't need any excess, you know, external heating of any sort. The terrarium I've got her in holds humidity really well. So I don't really need any heating of any sort for her. I mean, during the winter, if I notice that it's getting a bit cool, yeah, I'll have to implement, like just incorporate some form of heat, whether that be um, maybe I'll heat the water because it's a terrarium and it's fairly enclosed uh, so it, it holds humidity really well so you can put like a little heater in the water and that's all you need as long as you have that humidity and a slight warmth in the air they're quite happy so heating them is quite easy most of the time you don't need to go too crazy with it they don't like it as warm as a lot of your reptiles they like it a bit cooler probably the most important thing uh, with any frog really or any amphibian is water now their water is one of the most important things they're going to need. But I mean, it's one area where a lot of people can mess up. Because, as you all know, tap water has chlorine in it. And chlorine will kill your frog as well as it kills fish and other things too. So you don't want to just put straight tap water into their water bowl or into their terrarium waterfall or whatever. You need to remove the chlorine. So you want to go to your local aquarium and get some water conditioner just to remove the chlorine. Make sure that is a must because that will definitely kill your frog very quickly. I've actually got little fish living in my terrarium in the water section and they're there primarily as indicators of the water quality. If I'm, if the fish are doing well, the frog's going to do well. So yeah, I can kind of just see, oh look, the fish are swimming around, they're happy, so the water's great, I don't have to worry about the frog. That's kind of what I've done. You don't have to really do that. I just kind of did that because it's a newly set up terrarium and I wanted to be 100% sure before I put this guy in. One other thing to keep in mind, if your terrarium is in your room, for example, or if you just generally don't like sleeping with noise in the background, you want to get a female. The males croak, the females don't. So 
I specifically got a female because the terrarium is in my bedroom and I didn't want croaking all night. And that's been fine, she hasn't made a single noise all night. So, yeah, but if I was to get a male, he would be croaking all night. I've had green tree frogs in the past, I've had dwarf green tree frogs, and the males croak so loud. So, if you can't handle croaking, try to get a female over a male. Otherwise, if you're happy with the croaking, it doesn't bother you, it doesn't really matter, I guess, you get whatever you want. So, as I was mentioning before about how their skin is absorbent, uh, this reflects back onto anything in the terrarium that could potentially be toxic to them. Make sure that that just doesn't happen because it'll absorb into their skin and kill them. So nothing with chemicals. So, for example, I got live plants in my terrarium. I had to take all the soil off the plant's roots and wash them out before I put the plants in the terrarium. Because plants, usually when you buy them, will have fertilizer in the soil. The little like beads of fertilizer they mix into the soil. They're highly toxic to pretty much all animals and if any of that stuff got through the system, through the terrarium, into the water, or whatever, it would, event, it would end up in the frog's skin and eventually kill it. So you got to make sure that anything you're introducing that could potentially have any chemicals in it, it's all cleaned out before it goes in. So it's just very important to keep in mind, frogs need very pristine water as well. So you want to change the water at least once a week and make sure it's nice and clean because yeah, they're extremely sensitive to anything, whether that be chemicals um, or ammonia and nitrite in the water from you just not water changing enough or you're over polluting or whatever, they're very sensitive to it. In actual fact, frogs are an indicator of a healthy ecosystem. If you go down to a local wetland, for example, if you go to a wetland area and there are no frogs in that wetland area at all, chances are that water's polluted. They're the first thing to go when something goes wrong. When the water goes bad, frogs are the first thing to die off because they're so sensitive to bad water quality. So they're a good indicator of a healthy ecosystem. So keeping that in mind, they are sensitive. You gotta make sure the water is always very clean. It's got zero ammonia and nitrite and low nitrate. So regular water changes. So in case anyone's wondering, these guys are also native to North and East Australia. And yes, they are found in wetland areas, forest areas, they are found even around people's houses sometimes. They are kind of a common species in certain areas of Australia. Very well known type of frog. And I mean, their lifespan in the wild, they live between 7 and 12 years, on average. In captivity, they've been known to live up and over 20 years. Now this is primarily because in the wild, they don't live that long because I mean, as you can see, they're not the fastest type of frog in the world. They're not the most agile. Usually when something threatens them, they don't even move. They just rely on their camouflage alone. So if something does find them and has seen them through their camouflage, unfortunately that frog is, is now dinner because they're not very fast. They're not going to be able to get away most of the time. They've got no other means of defense. They're not poisonous like a lot of frog species can be. Being a frog also, there's no teeth or claws or nothing else. They're just a big squishy meal, so yeah, I mean, that's why in the wild, the average life is between 7 and 12, again, on average, but in captivity, they have been seen to live up to over 20 years. So expect to have them for a while uh, if you decide to get one of these. I think they're amazing. I think anyone who wants a frog should definitely get one of these if they've never had one before. I recommend these to anybody. They are just amazing. I've had a great time keeping this little little girl so far and I plan on getting more. I have actually fallen in love with this little frog quite a lot. I've always kept snakes and lizards. I've never gotten into the other stuff too much. I've kept frogs once or twice in the past and I've kept other things like geckos in the past but like this is the first frog I've actually really liked so I've just never dealt with this species before. I uh, Again I had dwarf green tree frogs which same style of care but I mean they're very small and they hide a lot and they don't like being handled and you never really see them so they're not as enjoyable. Uh, I've just found this particular species to be a really rewarding one. So that's why I'm recommending the green tree frog for anybody. As always guys, you know the drill, like and subscribe, follow me on Instagram and Twitter, links will be down below. I'm going to put this little girl back in her terrarium and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.